Welcome to Calibre Conversations, a podcast about embracing God's standard for sexuality. I'm your host, Brady Cohn. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we are going to have kind of a quick episode, but I want you to be aware of something that is happening in our culture and this new podcast that's coming out that I think is going to be the topic of a lot of conversation and probably contention. And I think there's going to be some battle lines drawn. And so I think we need to know how to navigate this. And I want to give you guys some context uh, to understand this conversation that's going to be happening. And so this podcast is coming out on October 28th. They just released recently the podcast trailer that is about 90 seconds long, and I'm going to play it here in a moment. And from just releasing the trailer, it has grown to the number three ranked podcast on Apple Podcasts. So it's pretty crazy. There's a lot of talk about it, and it is going to be a lot of talk about sexuality and biblical sexuality and what that looks like. And so I want to play for us this trailer and then talk about the different players involved and maybe some wisdom on how we can navigate this conversation. I think a lot of these conversations in our culture and within the church don't always go very well. So sometimes they're not very fruitful. Sometimes they're full of bias and jealousy and envy and malice. And uh, it's it's really, really rough, especially if you say play out on social media. So let's go with it and play this trailer. When does a movement go from fringe to mainstream? What happens when theology gets politicized? You've heard of Christian nationalism, but who stands behind it, fuels it, and is fueled by it? The Me Too and Church Too movements merge here, where racism is embraced, outsiders are feared, and the voting rights for women and minorities are up for re-examination, where they desire to reinstitute Mosaic judicial law over the land, crush the religious freedom of other faiths, and where abuse of women and children is justified by citing refusal to submit to authority. What started as a movement to oppose the mainstream has now become mainstream. Throughout this series, you will hear about the rise of a movement centered in the Pacific Northwest and its patriarch, Doug Wilson. And though we'll focus our attention on Wilson, our scope will be broad. We will look at the rise of this movement, examine its incoherent theology, political agenda, its history of abuse and racism, and so much more. We'll discuss where we see it going, what you should know, and what we can do about it. Welcome to Sons of Patriarchy. I'm your host, Peter Bell. Let's get into it. All right. Well, it sounds like it is going to be fiery. And so if you didn't catch some of the details in there, it's really going to be an expose of Doug Wilson, who is kind of a very controversial pastor in Moscow, Idaho. Not kind of, he is a very controversial pastor. And I've, I've spoken about him a couple of times before, uh, kind of refuting a couple of the things he has said about marriage. And so this this podcast is going to be talking about, you know, the sons of patriarchy. And so he's, Doug perpetuates a theology of, of patriarchy, which isn't always defined very well. And uh, there's, I think that there's some reasonable issues with him. I've had issues with him, uh, what he, how he talks about marriage and sexuality. I think his language he uses um, to talk about sexuality is extremely vile. I think that the way that he talks about women is extremely problematic. I think that uh, there is evidence, and I, I've been following him for a long time, and following a lot of his kind of detractors who are the ones putting on this podcast, they have a lot of evidence of covering up abuse. And the abuse is a word that's overused these days, I, I believe, and we're going to talk about that more. But uh, I think there are legitimate cases of abuse that he has helped cover up and his theology kind of perpetuates that. And so that's obviously problematic. And it's said in this trailer that he, you know, uh, justifies abuse of women and children. And if that's true, then obviously that's horrible. And we want to fight against that. Um, however, the 
people behind this podcast have some extreme views themselves. And so I think that this is also going to be problematic. I've been seeing what some of these people have been saying and putting out for years now. And I kind of talked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago on the podcast about every man's battle. I said, there's a pendulum that's, that's swinging. And so this same group that is calling out some troubling teaching and uh, resources like every man's battle and kind of 90s purity culture, they've also swung this pendulum way too far. And I, I, I don't know if there's a name for this movement. Um, I tend to call them very kind of feminist egalitarians. And so uh, they're, they're fighting for egalitarianism in the church. And But there's a lot of strings and threads of feminism and what they're teaching and what they're saying. And so I think that this is going to be a problem because I think that they are exposing some real issues with Doug Wilson, with both uh, theology of marriage and politics, and the political side is going to come out and how they are, uh, you know, digging into his Christian nationalism. And that's kind of part of his post-millennial theology. And I'm not going to dig into that. That's not my area of expertise. I think that he's off there and that uh, that's that's not my forte right there. So I'm not going to dig into Christian nationalism today. I would like to talk about the uh, pendulum between this extreme complementarianism, patriarchy that Doug Wilson teaches, and then also this kind of feminist egalitarian that seems to be the response to it. Uh, there's there's this pendulum on both sides that can both be equally wrong and. I'm going to go out on a limb and make assumptions, and I don't like to do that, but I'm going to anyway. So, you know, I, I hear when people say that, they say, well, I don't like to do something, but I'm going to do it anyway, but that's what I'm going to do. But I think it's a uh, assumption based on um, uh, a lot of information that, that I have. And that assumption is that this podcast, Sons of Patriarchy, is going to make a extremely, extremely strong plea that the only answer to the issues with Doug Wilson and his, you know, understanding of theology is egalitarianism. And if I'm proven wrong on that, I will come on and I will say that and I will acknowledge that and I will retract that. But considering who is involved in the making of this and some of the people I know that they've interviewed, I think that's an extremely fair assessment. And so this is a crowd of people who I think really misconstrues complementarianism. And they look at what's happened at times with abuse in homes and marriages. And they look at how the word submission has been misused. Now, they have reasonable complaints. You know, there's been marriages that are abusive. And the word submission has been used wrong to... Uh, justify a man really just lording over his wife and uh, it, and it's wrong and we need to call that out that the problem is not complementarianism the problem is sin because a true complementarian wouldn't do those things uh the problem is just a sinful heart that is abrasive and abusive and twist God's word and doesn't actually live out God's word and so before I get any further let's just define the difference between complementarianism and egalitarianism and there's so much that could be said about this and i i probably should do a whole series on it but today i just wanted to prepare you somewhat for this podcast that's coming out since i believe that it's going to cause a lot of discussion so complementarianism according to the southern baptist faith and message from the year 2000 this is how they define complementarianism the husband and wife are of equal worth before God, since both are created in God's image. The marriage relationship models the way God relates to his people. A husband is to love his wife as Christ loved the church. He has the God-given responsibility to provide for, to protect, and to lead his family. A wife is to submit to her husband graciously, to the servant leadership of her husband, even as the church willingly submits to the headship of Christ. She, being in the 
image of God as her husband and thus equal to him, has a God-given responsibility to respect her husband and serve as his helper in managing the household and nurturing the next generation. All right, so uh, that is the actual definition according to you know, one Christian denomination of complementarianism. And it provides this distinguishment between a husband and wife and their roles. And a husband is to uh, protect and provide for his family and to lead his family. And a wife is to submit and egalitarians say that word submit. Uh, and it is, it is harmful when it's done wrongly. And we, we understand that. Um, but egalitarians will reject anything that is, uh, that, that suggests that, uh, men and women are different and have different roles to play both in the home in marriage and in the church and in church leadership. But that's what actual complementarianism is. And now let's get on to egalitarianism. This is according to the uh, Christians for Biblical Equality. Egalitarianism holds that all believers without regard to gender, ethnicity, or class must exercise their God-given gifts with equal authority and equal responsibility in the church, home, and the world. So they take away all distinguishments between the roles of men and women uh, in the world, the home, and the church. And I reject that theology. I, I think that it's wrong. And I think that uh, they are responding to sin by rejecting biblical truth. And so I reject that theology, but I don't reject the people. I don't reject uh, egalitarians who I know and love. I have brothers and sisters in Christ who are egalitarians, and I love them as brothers and sisters in Christ. I think that they're wrong in that one era of theology, but I still love them, and I, I honor them, and I cherish them. What I could never get on board with is the egalitarians who say that all complementarianism is abusive and that the cause of abuse, uh, even though they don't have a clear definition for abuse, um, the cause of that is complementary theology or patriarchy. They, they use those two very interchangeably at times. And so I don't reject the, all the people who are egalitarianism, but I re reject some of the rhetoric that is coming from this kind of very feminist arm of egalitarianism. And I believe they're absolutely wrong, and they blame complementarianism for sin issues that is not the fault of complementarianism. So we don't need to get rid of complementarianism. We just need to do it right. And the Bible says a lot about honoring our wives. Uh, Proverbs 5.18 says, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. Like we love and honor and rejoice in our wife. You know, Proverbs 31 it talks about, uh, you know, this wonderful wife, and that's kind of used as kind of a standard for a godly woman. But I also think it's really shows how a man honors his wife, calls out her greatness and allows her to use her giftings and abilities. Uh, and, and I think that that's honorable. And that's how complementarianism should be lived out. Uh, many times, you know, the feminist egalitarians, they go to the word submit and they bring out all these examples of women who have been abused under the guise of submission. And like I've said, that is a problem. And many times pastors have overlooked, you know, sexual abuse, uh, physical abuse, uh, a domineering, you know, attitude from a husband. And they've overlooked that. Uh, and just told a wife to submit to her husband without holding him responsible for his behavior. And that's wrong. We need to call a spade a spade. But that is not complementarianism, because if you're following complementarianism, you're also following the rest of God's word. And I just want to read 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. We all know this. It's read at about every wedding. Uh, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Any husband 
who is a complementarian should also be living out that verse or verses. And that's not a husband who is abusive. Uh, this is building a really high standard and we all fall short at times. I know I fall short. Like I'm not always patient with my wife. I'm not always uh, kind. Uh, I've been arrogant at times. I've been rude. Uh, and gosh, like I fall short, which is why I need Jesus. And so men need to be held accountable to that. And I think that in the church, we can do a much better job. Um, many times the attitude that uh, the egalitarians call out is that you know, women are responsible to submit no matter what, and they kind of hold women accountable to that. And yet they don't hold men accountable to being a husband who loves his wife like Christ loved the church. And we, we need to get better about that. We need more discipleship. We need biblical eldership that speaks into marriages and holds both husband and wife accountable. Uh, I think many times what I hear from the egalitarian movement is that women don't have a voice and they're, they're not listened to. And so many times pastors, when there's a marriage issue, only listen to the husband. And that's that's wrong. That, that lacks wisdom. You need to dig into this marriage and understand what's going on from both sides. And both parties are sinners. And so in every marriage, there's going to be some level of dysfunction and sin that needs to be dealt with. And we need to live that out in community uh, but that is that doesn't mean we reject what how God created marriage, um, which is a complementary design in which men and women have equal value but somewhat separate roles. And many times, what I hear from the the egalitarians is that complementarianism uh, keeps women from using their their giftings and their talents, and it's like. Yeah, I think that that's been true at times. And so uh, we need to be cautious with that. They will take it so far to say, it's like, well, some women's gift is preaching. And so they need to be a pastor. And it's like, no, like that's not within God's boundaries for the office of pastor. And so even though women can be gifted in so many areas, they can still use those giftings without stepping outside the boundaries that God has for men and women. And so I, I have a feeling, and again, again, I'm speculating, and maybe I will have to eat my words here in a couple of weeks, uh, that they are going to come out strong with uh, uh, egalitarianism as the only you know, answer. And we need to know that, uh, um, that they're wrong. And I have a feeling, again, this is just by knowing some of the people involved and what I see on their Facebook pages. They're going to tell story after story of women who have been strongly abused. And that's tragic. We mourn that. We should decry that. We should call it out. We should be there to support them. We should be there to stop the stop real abuse, whether it's, it's sexual, um, you, know, uh, you know, domestic violence. There's no place for that. Uh, in, in any marriage, we need to stop that. But so many times they are reading abuse into everything. And so I've, I've been digging through the last few weeks into some of these uh, egalitarian movements and on a podcast from one of the very popular kind of leaders of that movement. Um, she actually said that if a church teaches complementarian theology and they don't have women pastors on staff, then you should go ahead and call Child Protective Services because the pastor is probably abusing kids. What? That is an abhorrent accusation and absolutely not true. So that is the type of rhetoric that is uh, being perpetuated by this feminist egalitarian movement. I, I also seen in an article that uh, one, one of them shared, who's, again, a very popular voice in that movement. And in the article, it was spelling out the different types of abuse. And again, there's there's not a lot of clear definitions. We, we know, you know, sexual abuse, physical abuse. Um, but many times they talk about emotional abuse, which I don't want to say isn't real, but they're saying that all of the women are abused because of complementarian theology. 
and spelling out all these different types of abuse. And it said, if your husband has ever called you a name, then he's an abuser. Okay, hold on. Like that is, that's going way too far. And not for a husband, you know, calling his wife names, but we need to work through that in marriage because none of us are perfect. And I don't think I've ever called my wife a name. So we, we've, we've had disagreements and kind of arguments, but we've never had really a, uh, we've never had a name type calling, you know, argument. I've never called her a name. Um, and so, you know, and I don't want to, but you know, if I ever did, I, gosh, I, I don't think that that's abusive. I might need to repent of my attitude towards her, but they really feed into this attitude of, you know, if, your husband's ever called your name and he's an abuser. So you need to get out of your marriage and get to a safe place. And so uh, I, I think that they're reading abuse into um, way too many situations and they're actually taking advantage of vulnerable women, that they're taking advantage of women who uh, have hurt and pain in their life and they're making them more and more of a victim. And what these marriages need is healthy church eldership uh, and oversight. They need their, their discipleship to be submitted to healthy church elders that can speak into both of them and call them both to repentance where they need it. Uh, there's, I, I think, a extreme side of complementarianism that they will be calling out that I think is kind of part of Doug Wilson's movement where um, men get by with everything and women are blamed for everything. And that's wrong, right? That, that's absolutely wrong. And men should be taking responsibility for their households, for the, their marriages. And so in leading our families, and that should be modeling repentance and kindness and godliness. But then now we have this pendulum of these feminist egalitarians where everything is uh, you know, the husband's fault and any, you know, issues in marriage is because the husband is being abusive and we need to reject that too. And so I just want to end with um, sharing just a few pieces of wisdom on and truths we should know as we navigate these conversations. I think it's important to navigate them. I don't think we just turn a blind eye to what is happening in culture, especially within Christianity. So I want to share uh, a few things that I think um, will help us. First of all, I think we need to reject tribalism. And here's the problem, is that we live in such a tribalistic culture, and we see this everywhere, especially within politics, you know, this extreme tribalism of you're either completely for this person or against this, you're on our team or you're completely against us. And I have to navigate that a lot, even within the very small world of biblical sexuality ministry. There's so much tribalism and people trying to pull you to one side or another and get you on their side. And we need to reject that. I talked about that a few weeks ago when I did an episode on wisdom from heaven in James chapter three. So I just want to read this passage. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have uh, bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and, and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. I think that that passage needs to apply to this conversation. And when it says, uh, you know, don't show partiality, that can also be said, don't show this tribalism that we get ourselves into. So if you want to hear more about that passage, go back and find that episode from a few weeks ago. I think we can see people on both the extremes here who live out this uh, selfish ambition and jealousy and uh, and both sides are wrong. And so we need to be uh, calling both sides wrong as, as we see it. I think we need to understand that 
two things can be true at once that complementarianism has been used dangerously and harmfully by some people and in some churches and at the same time the feminist egalitarians are wrong and so we can we should be able to um see both the, the truth and the uh lies and the misgivings and the falsehoods from both sides with that and and avoid one extreme or another I think that in our culture, we need to learn to celebrate the good about someone while rejecting the bad. Uh, I, I, I have a lot of concern with Doug Wilson for a lot of different reasons. And, but I think that we can acknowledge maybe some good things he's been a part of. He, he's really uh, helped in the last few decades um, start the uh, classical Christian education movement. And I think that's been a, a great thing. And so we can celebrate the good that someone has done while rejecting the bad. And that goes contrary to the tribalistic nature of our culture right now. And unfortunately, we're, we're letting that tribalism into the church. And so let's not get caught up in calling someone completely good or completely bad. Uh, I think that when we do that, you know, these extremes, um, they, they use that to manipulate us. And so I think we need to be careful that we don't allow people to pigeonhole us into wrong theology or to take a, taking a side. And, you know, I'm not a prophet. I don't claim to be a prophet. Uh, I'm a little more of a cessationalist, so I don't think that uh, those, those spiritual gifts are still in use. But uh, here's a little bit of prophecy, you know, the two-cent prophecy. So don't, don't put too much stock into it. But... I think that what's going to happen in this conversation is that Sons of Patriarchy is going to be wrong about how they portray complementarianism, and that's going to force people to defend Doug Wilson and his whole tribe uh, on things that they shouldn't be defended for. And then people who uh, um, see the problems with Doug Wilson will be kind of pigeonholed into accepting this, uh, you know, feminist egalitarianism. And so people are going to be forced uh, to go in one direction or another and ex either defend the theology that's wrong or accept theology that's wrong. And so don't buy into it. You can look at Doug Wilson and what he's doing, what he's saying and say, this is wrong, but this is also wrong. And let's use some wisdom from heaven to do that. Let's let's not give into the tribalism that forces us, and let's not be manipulated. Uh, let's not let our pendulum swing too far. Instead, let's look to the truth and say, look at what the what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about you know uh, marriage and uh, women? women and men's roles in marriage and the church. And let's then do that. Let's do that. Well, let's do that with love and honor and grace and make it everything that God intended to be, which is a, should be a beautiful picture of the gospel. And so don't let uh, either side uh, manipulate you into taking a strong side completely for one side and completely against another side we can call a spade a spade and say that they're both wrong and the truth lies somewhere in the middle or somewhere even completely outside of their, their sphere. And lastly, I, I think that we can use these cultural conversations to invest in people. I don't think we need to live just completely blind to these discussions, especially when this is a discussion of theology and what's happening in the church. And so uh, let's, Let's not shy away. Let's be careful about what we say and how we say it. Let's make sure we give grace to those who hear and uh, use it to build a vision for everything that God has for us, for, for marriage and for our culture and for how to raise a family that loves and honors the Lord. Uh, let's use it to have that discussion and to um, uh, move forward with good theology that, that loves people and values the institution of marriage and values women and children and stands up for injustices. 
And I think by taking a strong side on one or the other of this conversation that's going to be happening, I think we're going to miss the mark on that. So I just, I want us to do this well. I don't want us to miss the mark. I want us to uh, restore what God has made good. And we can only do that with surrender to Jesus, with humility and grace, with understanding, with loving our neighbor, with um, uh, rejecting the, the ways of culture, which is also the ways of the church too many times, which is this extreme tribalism. All right. Well, that's all I have for you. Now go and sin no more. Actually, first, you should probably uh, like this video. If you haven't, I really appreciate it. Leave a comment on YouTube. Really appreciate that too. Uh, share with your friends and go to calibrateministries.com for more resources. Uh, check out more podcast episodes. We really appreciate your support. If you're able to give financially, we really appreciate that. That's how we're able to do this. And we will be praying and I'll, I'll try to do an update on what is actually said in this podcast. And uh, we'll, we'll see if I'm right on my predictions. And again, if I'm wrong, I will completely acknowledge that. But uh, um, I, I have some good, uh, I think, intuition into where the conversation is going. And we pray for God's grace upon everyone involved. I pray for God's grace for you for you to embrace God's standard for sexuality, for marriage. Go love your husband, love your wife, love your kids, die to yourself. I need that reminder every single day, and I don't always do it well. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Calibrate Conversations.